Yes, it's Sunday morning, and that means it's time for another Hook of the Week. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge. Well, let's go take a look in the bucket and see what we can find for this week's hook. Still lots of stuff in the bucket. How about this piece of angle iron here? This looks like it's about eighth inch thick, so that's about three millimeters, half by half, so 13 by 13 leg angle iron, seven inches long. That makes it 175 millimeters roughly. And again, I keep saying this, none of this matters. This is just what I have. The idea here is to challenge your imagination and use the materials you have on hand to create something that you hadn't envisioned before. Now, to be honest, I have envisioned this project. I saw this angle iron in there and I've kind of known what I was going to do with it. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a feather out of it and the quill of the feather will be what becomes the hook. If you've never seen an angle iron feather, this is a great introduction to feathers out of angle iron. The first thing I want to do is flatten the angle iron, but I don't want to take the corner all the way off of it. That's going to be the center quill of the feather. Just want to get it flat so we can work with it. So for now, that's really all I need to do. Now we need to cut the tip of the feather and the quill of the feather. So we'll start just by cutting the tip off here. I'm not going to cut quite all the way through, or at least not very vigorously. There's always a chance you'll shoot that feather all the way across the, the shop if you do that. This would be a good time to file that burr off real quick. Again, be careful not to crush the little center spine there. There's so little to do here, I don't think it really has to be hot. This is an old worn out file that I use for hot work, so it isn't very sharp anymore. That's really all that end needs. We need to cut the stem part out or the, the quill or the hook or whatever we want to call it. Now this would be quite easily done with a bandsaw. Probably wouldn't chop it up as bad as I am. But, if you don't have a bandsaw, you can do this with a chisel. I'm going to go ahead and lay it out while it's still relatively cold here. Be a little bit faster and easier. Luckily, the part that I'm chopping up and making ugly is the part I'm going to cut off and throw away. If you have a treadle hammer, it's a great place to cut this.
and it'll go much faster. Really, a treadle hammer is a wonderful thing in a one-person shop. And of course, you should take the time to clean up all that ragged stuff there. You can certainly do it with a grinder, but if you don't have one, a file or hot rasp works quite well. Let's make that look more like a feather, although you might be able to see it already starting to form there. So the first thing I want to do is just round up the quill portion, the part that will eventually become our hook. This will end up with a little bit of a cold shut right down the back, but because it's lengthwise it really doesn't hurt anything. Feel free to bring it up to welding heat if it bothers you. As long as I'm working on this end, I'm going to go ahead and heat it back up and flare the end out a little bit. Just put a taper on it so that'll be our hook end. This is something a little different than the usual rat tail curl that I use so often. If that's all it's going to need. But I'm not going to bother to make the hook until we finish the feather. So the first thing I want to do for the feather is I want to kind of round this quill section up. It's a little bit sharp and angular right now. To do that, I will put it in a very small swedge block. This is probably about a 3 16 diameter groove in here, and that'll fit just perfectly in there. Just make sure you actually get it in the swedge every blow. Or you'll end up really chopping it up. This should make the feather fairly flat on the back. And yes, a real feather would have this detail front and back. But that looks a lot better already. I think I'll go again and try to feather the edges out, so to speak. So this is less about forming that quill and more about just thinning the edges. So I want to make sure the quill stays centered. Really bending up the quill down here. I think that already looks better. And the same thing to the other side. cleaning up that it needs. And then it'll be time to make it really look like a feather. The next thing we want to do with our feather is put lots of little chisel cuts in it to represent the normal texture, the barbs, I think they're called, that a feather has. This is just a whole lot of tedious chiseling. 
And you don't have to put them all in, you just want to put enough in to make it look right. And for the most part, you don't want to cut all the way through. But every now and then, it's typical for them to spread apart a little bit. And at that point, it's okay if you cut through a little bit. This will take several heats. I'll resist doing this under the treadle hammer because it'd be really easy to cut all the way through that way. That's kind of what we're going for. I'm just going to very lightly clean up that central quill there. We got a few chisel marks on it, which I don't like. And I think I'll go to the vise and I'll clean up these cuts that I meant to go all the way through, just so they look a little bit better. And just smooth that back out since this has to sit against the wall as a hook. That's pretty much everything we need to do to the feather end until after it's cooled anyways, at which point we'll put some holes in it. I'm not going to punch holes in this because it will really damage that quill and make big flat spots. So I'm going to drill the holes. Now let's just make the hook. Just going to put a little bit of a roll on this, not a complete curl. That's just trying to do it a little different every time. Just another simple little pipe jig. And there is our hook. So I'm going to let that cool. I'm going to drill the holes. And then I'm going to show you one more step that I think really makes this look a lot better and a lot more feather-like. Try to get your center punch mark centered on that spine. It's kind of tough, but it can be done. Not as well centered as I had hoped. That's very disappointing. I'm drilling and countersinking for number eight flathead wood screws. So with my slightly off-center holes drilled, so far it's the only thing I'm really disappointed about on this, I'm sanding this just a little by hand. I want it to be kind of shiny at this point. This isn't going to be the absolute final look for it, but even that way it looks pretty darn good, I think.
So just take a few minutes and hand sand it or use a Dremel or something with a little wire wheel or whatever you got to clean this up and make it look shiny. These numbers written on the bench have nothing to do with this hook. Now I'm just going to use the torch to heat this and bring out some tempering colors. Even though we're not actually tempering because it's not a hardened piece of steel, the oxide colors will still come up. And I want the most of the hook to be kind of a straw to bronze. And then I want to get a kind of a purple going up here at the very tip. This is hot, so be careful here. That's a little bit more than I wanted, so I'm going to shine it back some and let the colors come back into it. And we'll stop it by cooling it off with the paste wax. Now probably pre-drilling those holes with a, maybe a sixteenth of an inch bit to make sure they were centered before I went to the three sixteenths bit for the number eight screw would have been a little bit more reliable. But in any case, because I'm going to use a flathead wood screw that has a slot, it kind of camouflages itself and it doesn't show much anyway, so I think we're going to be okay in the long run. I do hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, but be safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.